Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com. In this week's video we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop CS3 for the very first time here at freephotoshop.com, but we're not going to be using any of its new functionality just yet. Instead we're going to check out the tried and tested sponge tool and I'm going to show you how it works and where it comes in useful. Now the image I've got on screen is called tiogalake.psd and it's a photograph I took in 2006 of Tiaga Lake just outside Yosemite National Park in California and if we look closely at the photograph we'll see that it's kind of divided into three sections. Down here at the bottom we've got Tiaga Lake itself then in the middle section we have an abundance of trees going up into the mountains and then at the top of the photograph is filled with sky and a few fluffy clouds. Now if we take a look at this image as it's pulled together then I would personally say that the sky looks great, the clouds are a little bit flat but I like the way they cast the shadow over the mountains here and down here at the bottom of the lake or I should say the lake itself is a very rich blue colour which is probably helped along by the sky being such a deep blue colour as well. The only thing I'm not too impressed about are the trees. To me they're looking a little bit dull and in need of a saturation boost. And when I say saturation by the way I'm referring to the vividness of the colours. So if I have a lot of saturation then we're saying that we have a lot of rich and vivid colour detail within the image itself which is what we've got going on here in the sky and also down here in the lake. If we have an unsaturated image, so to say, an image with little saturation, then we're saying that the colours are fairly dull. An image with no saturation at all, by the way, is deemed to be a grayscale image, which in an 8-bit colour space, such as the one I'm working in here, is going to contain a black a white and 254 different brightness values of grey, ranging from a very dark grey to a very light grey. Anyhow, we're digressing there. So what I want to do is add some saturation to the trees. And I could do that by hitting Control U here on the PC or Command U on the Mac to bring up the Hue Saturation dialog box and then just bump this saturation value up until I see something I like. The trouble here is that we're applying the saturation value to the whole image. So the trees are starting to look good, but we're oversaturating the sky and the lake. And oversaturation is never a good thing when you're trying to maintain a level of realism in your photographs. Now I could have selected what I wanted to saturate before I came in here with one of the selection tools, but there's a better way of working in this situation. And I'm going to hit the Council button, and then come over here to the Tools palette, and I'm going to click and hold on this little sponge icon to reveal this mini wing menu because the sponge tool shares its home, so to speak, with the burn and dodge tools. And these are collectively known as the toning tools here in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and select the sponge tool and you'll notice that we have some controls up here in the options bar. The first set of controls being the brush options and we can change any of these by just clicking on the icon. Now it's important to realise that the sponge tool is a variation of the brush tool, but instead of brushing the colours into the canvas, we're going to be brushing saturation into the image. Now the two sliders here give you access to the size of the brush and the hardness of the brush. Now you'll find when you're doing work like this, you're going to achieve the best results with the softest brush. And just to make sure we're on the same wavelength, I'm going to hide the visibility of the photograph for a second to reveal this brush hardness layer and the stroke on the left is at the 100% hardness rating and the stroke on the right is painted at the 0% hardness rating so it's giving us a built-in feathering effect which is essential to avoid harsh edges of saturation meaning that our brush strokes are going to blend in perfectly with the rest of the image. There are also some really handy shortcuts for changing the size and hardness of a brush and I'll show you them in just a few moments. The next option is the mode, which is pretty straightforward. We can either saturate using the sponge tool, meaning to make the colours more intense, or desaturate, which is to make the colours less intense. I'm going to go ahead and select saturate as we want to increase the intensity of the colour of the trees, so that's going to work out just great. 
The flow value determines how much saturation or desaturation you are applying in each brush stroke. So with a higher flow value, you'll be making more noticeable edits to your image than you would if you were using a lower flow value. Now, when you're working with photographs like we are here, you want to stick to a fairly low flow value. Something like 10 or 20% will usually be about right, but it really does differ from image to image. I'm going to set the value here to 20%. We also have an airbrush toggle switch up here to enable the airbrush feature. With the airbrush switched on, if we click and hold over part of the image, we're going to keep applying more and more saturation. If we have it switched off, like I'd recommend, then that doesn't happen. You have to begin a new stroke to apply a more intense layer of saturation or desaturation, whichever you have active. OK, so we now know how the sponge tool works. So let's see this little beauty in action. I'm going to come down here to the image and I'm going to set the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. Right bracket makes the brush larger and left bracket makes it smaller. If you use the bracket keys with the shift key down, then right bracket makes the brush harder and left bracket makes the brush softer. And you're adjusting that at 25% increments, by the way. So you have four presses of the bracket key to get from the hardest brush to the softest and vice versa. I'm going to set my brush so that it's just a little larger than the greenery on the right side of the image. So that's a brush size of around 500 pixels as I've got here. And I'm going to hit shift left bracket to ensure I'm using the softest brush available. Then I'm going to paint over the trees like so. And I'm just dragging over the trees, by the way, in one solid motion. I'm just holding down the left mouse button and dragging all the way across the area of the photograph which contains the trees, like so. Now to me, things are looking a lot better, but I'd say we can afford to go a little further even though we've already done a lot of goodness to this photograph. I'd say we can go ahead and repeat that brush stroke over the trees inside this photograph. And now I'd say we've made a really positive impact on the photograph. Now let me just show you what the image looked like before we applied the sponge tool. That's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now with two brush strokes of the sponge tool. I'm going to zoom in here so we can get a better view because I'm not so sure you can see this image as vibrant and as pure as I can on my screen. So this is before and this is after. All thanks to the sponge tool right here inside of Photoshop CS3. Well, I hope you found this tutorial on freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.